Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to draw a histogram for an ungrouped data. In this video, we are going to learn how to draw a histogram for a grouped data. From the previous video, we learned that when drawing a histogram for an ungrouped data, you will have the max on the horizontal axis and the frequencies on the vertical axis. If the data is grouped, you are going to have the class midpoint or the mid values or the class boundaries on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, you will have either the frequencies or the frequency densities. To get the frequency density, you will need the class size or the class width. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you get the class midpoint or the class mid value, the class boundaries, and the class size or the class width. We need to understand these things before we can draw a histogram for a grouped data. Let's begin with the class midpoint or the class mid value. As I've said, the class midpoint is also known as the class mid value. I'm going to use this example here to explain it to you. So let's say that these are the marks scored by some students in a test. We have the different intervals here. The first one is 5 to 9. The second one is 10 to 14. The third one is 15 to 19. And the fourth one is 20 to 24. And these are the frequencies. When we take an interval, the smaller number is called the lower class limit and the bigger number is called the upper class limit. So for example, for the interval 5 to 9, 5 is the lower class limit and 9 is the upper class limit. How do we find the class midpoint for each of these intervals? I'm going to bring a column here so that we can have our class midpoint or the class mid values here. You will get the class midpoint or the class mid value for a particular interval by adding the lower and upper class limit for that interval and dividing the results by 2. So to get the class midpoint or the class mid value for a particular interval, we will add our class limit to the upper class limit and then we will divide the results by 2. So to get the class midpoint or the class mid value for 5 to 9, we will add 5 to 9 and then we will divide the results by 2. 5 plus 9 will give us 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the class midpoint or the class mid value for this particular interval is 7. In the same way, 10 plus 14 will give us 24. 24 divided by 2 will give us 12. 15 plus 19 will give us 34. 34 divided by 2 will give us 17. And 20 plus 24 will give us 44. 44 divided by 2 is 22. So this is how to find the class midpoint or the class mid values. You add the lower class limit to the upper class limit, and then you divide the results by 2. Let's learn how to find the class boundaries. I'm going to use the same example. I'll have another column here for the class boundaries. To get the class boundaries, the first thing you need to do is to select two consecutive class intervals. So from this table, we can select 5 to 9 and 10 to 14 or you can select 10 to 14 and 15 to 19 or you can select 15 to 19 and 20 to 24. The most important thing is that the two intervals should be consecutive. That is one should follow the other. For this particular example, I'm going to select 5 to 9 and 10 to 14. So the intervals I'm using are 5 to 9 and 10 to 14. After selecting the two consecutive intervals, what do you do? The next thing is that 
subtract the upper class limit of the first one from the lower class limit of the second one and divide the results by 2. The first one here is 5 to 9 and the second one is 10 to 14. The point says that we should subtract the upper class limit of the first one. The upper class limit of 5 to 9 is 9. It says we should subtract the upper class limit of the first one from the lower class limit of the second one. The lower class limit of 10 to 14 is 10. So the point is saying that we should subtract 9 from 10. That is 10 minus 9. 10 minus 9 will give us 1. Then what sh should we do next? It says that we should divide the results by 2. So you will divide the result, which is 1 by 2. When you divide 1 by 2, we are going to have 0 0.5. After doing this, what do you do next? Subtract the result of step 2 from the lower class limits and add it to the upper class limits. So after doing this, it says that we should subtract the result from step 2. The result from step 2 is 0 0.5. We should subtract the 0 0.5 from the lower class limits and add it to the upper class limits. So to get the class boundary for each class, we will subtract the result from step 2, which is 0 0.5, from the lower class limit and add it to the upper class limit. So if we take the first interval, which is 5 to 9, we will subtract 0 0.5 from 5, and then we will add 0 0.5 to 9. 5 minus 0 0.5 will give us 4.5. 5 plus 9 will give us 9.5. So for the first interval, the class boundary will be 4.5 to 9.5. We will do the same thing for the second one. We will subtract 0 0.5 from 10 and add 0 0.5 to 14. 10 minus 0 0.5 will give us 9.5. 14 plus 0 0.5 will give us 14.5. For the third one, too, we will do the same thing. We will subtract 0 0.5 from 15 and add 0 0.5 to 19. 15 minus 0 0.5 will give us 14.5. And 19 plus 0 0.5 will give us 19.5. And for the last one, we will subtract 0 0.5 from 20 and add 0 0.5 to 24. 20 minus 0 0.5 will give us 19.5. And 24 plus 0 0.5 will give us 24.5. So this is how to find the class boundaries. You first select two consecutive class intervals. Then you subtract the upper class limit of the first one from the lower class limit of the second one and divide the results by 2. Then after that, you subtract the result from step 2 from the lower class limits and add it to the upper class limits. When you get the class boundary for a particular class, the smaller number is called the lower class boundary and the bigger number is called the upper class boundary. So for example, for the class boundary 4.5 to 9.5, 4.5 is known as the lower class boundary and 9.5 is known as the upper class boundary. Let's learn how to find the class size or the class width. We are using the same example. To get the class size or the class width, subtract the lower class boundary from the upper class boundary. So it means that in order to get the class size or the class width, we will need the class boundaries. We have learned how to find them. So I'll bring it here. So these are the class boundaries for the intervals. The point says that to get the class size or the class width for a particular interval, we have to subtract the lower class boundary from the upper class boundary. As I've already explained, when you have a class boundary, the smaller number is the lower class boundary and the bigger number is the upper class boundary. So for example, if we take the class boundary 14.5 to 19.5, 14.5 is the lower class boundary and 19.5 is the upper class boundary. 
to get the class size or the class width, we will subtract the lower class boundary from the upper class boundary. I'm going to push this here so that we can add another column for the class size. So to get the class size for each particular interval, I'll subtract the lower class boundary from the upper class boundary. So for the first one, it's going to be 9.5 minus 4.5, which is 5. For the second one, it's going to be 14.5 minus 9.5, which is 5. For the third one, it's going to be 19.5 minus 14.5, which is 5. And for the last one, it's going to be 24.5 minus 19.5, which is 5. So as you can see here, the class size of all the intervals are the same. When you are drawing a histogram for a grouped data, and the class size or the class width of all the different intervals is the same, on the vertical axis, you are going to have the frequencies. That is the frequencies you have in the table. But if the class size or the class width is not the same for all the intervals, you are going to have the frequency densities. So if the class size is the same for all the intervals, you have the frequencies on the vertical axis. If the class size is not the same for all the intervals, you have the frequency densities. As we go on in this lesson, I will explain how to find the frequency densities to you. As you can clearly see here, the class size or the class width is very important. It determines whether you have the frequencies or the frequency densities on the vertical axis. So when you have a data that is grouped and you are going to draw a histogram, you first have to check whether the class size or the class width of all the different intervals are the same. A quick way to do that is by subtracting the lower class limit from the upper class limit. If the difference between the lower class limit and the upper class limit of all the different classes are the same, then it means that they will have the same class size. So as you can see here, when we subtract 5 from 9, we will get 4. When you subtract 10 from 14, you will get 4. When you subtract 15 from 19, you will get 4. And when you subtract 20 from 24, you get 4. The difference between the lower class limit and the upper class limit of all the different classes are the same. So it means that the class sizes will be the same. Remember that the class size is the difference between the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary. It is not the difference between the lower class limit and the upper class limit. But a quick way to check whether the class size or the class width will be the same is by subtracting the lower class limits from the upper class limits. If it's the same for all the different intervals, then it means that the class sizes will also be the same. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. In the next video, we are going to apply what we have learned in this video to draw a histogram for a grouped data. Bye-bye.